And what a night record breaking midterm election, a huge number of voter turnout in Oregon, Washington and really across the country. And tonight we know at this point where most of those races stand. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty and I'm Laurel Porter. Tonight the balance of power in the US House has shifted. Oregon has made a statement on its sanctuary status, abortion and affordable housing. Lots to talk about, but in Southwest Washington, a race for the US House still at this point in the evening too close to call. We do have our KGW crews spread across the area. They're getting reaction from those people who are going to be leading our city and state forward and into the future. We begin, though, with that race for Oregon's governor. It was a long, tough fight, but in the end, Oregon's governor, Kate Brown, wins re-election over Republican challenger Newt Bueller by about six points. KGW's Kylie Boshi kicks off our live coverage tonight at Brown's victory celebration in downtown Portland. Kyle. Laura Oregon Governor Kate Brown knew this would be a tight race all along, so she was pleasantly surprised to see such a strong lead early on as those initial returns started coming in. The governor then celebrated on stage with her many supporters. She danced and literally jumped for joy, giving high fives to many of the kids around her during the celebration. Hundreds of Oregon Democrats celebrated at the victory party here in downtown Portland. During her speech, Governor Brown thanked her many, many volunteers, and afterwards, Here's what she had to say. What made the difference in this race? Uh, it was our people power, uh, our team, our coordinated efforts. We knocked on over 400,000 doors in the last 10 days. It really drove voter turnout, particularly in the metro areas, but all across the state. The governor clearly enjoying the moment, but she admits there's not much time to sit back and relax and celebrate. She's got to get to work right away and deliver a budget within the next few weeks. Back to you. They're going to have to start asking you to clean up tables there. That's because the, the race has been over for quite some time. Yeah, thanks for that report. KGW's Maggie Vespa is live in downtown right now with Newt Bueller's campaign. And, and again, I mentioned it, early, it ended kind of early, Maggie. Bueller even surprised some of the party leaders with how quickly he conceded tonight. Yeah, Dan, he definitely did. As you know, we had the Oregon GOP chair up here on stage right after the Oregonian called the race for the incumbent, Governor Kate Brown. And the chair told us, you know, we're going to wait this out. We're going to wait until all of those districts across the state, the ones that Newt Bueller visited during his campaign, are reporting all of their results. A few minutes later, maybe five minutes at the most after that happened, this happened. State Representative Newt Bueller went on stage, surrounded by his family, waving to his supporters, his donors, his volunteers, and he said, quote, I lost an election. Here's more of what he had to say. Uh, and Oregonians, uh, quite frankly, have decided that my voice, my voice will not be leading this state for the next four years, and I certainly accept that decision. But also, let's be very clear. The status quo in this state is not tolerable. It will not sustain the state. <laughs> Business as usual with the current trajectory puts the state at peril. Now, at one point, Bueller, at the beginning of his speech, mentioned Governor Brown, and at that point, a few people in the crowd started to boo, and he stopped them pretty quickly, and he said, you know, there's really no room for any of that here in this campaign, nor do I think that there has been in the past. He also said toward the end of his speech that he hopes lawmakers, including Democrats, quote, steal shamelessly from the ideas that he put forth during this campaign. This party, as you can imagine, Wrapped up soon after that speech. Graceful. Back to you. Graceful in defeat. Thank you so much, Meg. Oregonians also decided on a number of ballot measures this midterm. Let's take a look at some of those results. Yeah, Measure 102, like, allowing have... bonds for non-public low-income housing, passes. Measure 103, that's the grocery tax ban, that failed. Measure 104, which would require a supermajority vote for any measure that raises revenue, that one also failed. Measure 105, that aimed to get rid of Oregon's sanctuary state law, that failed. 63% of voters said no to that. It would, and they will keep now in place Oregon's 31-year-old law, which was the first in the U.S. So this was the reaction to that news from some of the protesters marching through downtown Portland tonight. The law, as you may know, forbids state agencies and police from using state resources or personnel to arrest people whose only crime was being in the country illegally. It means federal police and dollars will enforce those federal laws. 
The protests stayed pretty peaceful, stayed on the sidewalks as well, despite some worries from police. The ACLU talked about the sanctuary status victory tonight at their party. It's an amazing victory. I feel very proud of Oregon and Oregonians that we rejected the values of hate and divisiveness and, and, and said really loudly that in Oregon, we want to be a welcoming state. And one more measure on the ballot to tell you about. Measure 106, which would have banned public funding for abortions, also failed. Across the country, it was a battle for control in Congress. Re Republicans have held on to their majority in the Senate. Democrats gained control in the House. One of the critical races in the balance of power was playing out in Washington's 3rd District. Yeah, Democrat Carolyn Long and Republican incumbent Jamie Herrera Butler. This one going down to the wire. You see it here. KGW's Pat Doris live in Vancouver for us tonight. He was with both candidates at the watch parties. Pat, what is the latest from Washington? Well, Dan, it's still very close. In fact, too close to call. Neither side has conceded or claimed victory. Things have quieted down here considerably in Vancouver. I'm not sure there ever were many supporters at the Herrera Butler camp, but over at the long party, there were hundreds. They gathered from far and near. I met folks from the northern edge of the district in Chehalis who were so impressed at how many times Long was there both listening and campaigning. Long said she also built a small army of volunteers, 16,000 strong. We heard from both candidates tonight. Here's what they had to say. We won't know the results for a while. Um, this is what I knew my name would be a benefit to this campaign. Um, it's, going to be, it's been a long campaign. It will be a little bit longer. Uh, so we're down by about 10,000 votes, but we're fighting hard to the finish. I do yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel optimistic. I really do. Uh, I was I was very heavily outraised, and you saw what you've seen across the country tonight. Uh, a lot of Republicans and very Republican seats um, are losing their seats, and I've maintained for a long time this is a very independent seat. And so to to have that, it's a modest lead, right? We're not done. Um, makes me want, two things. I want to say uh, thank you to the folks in Southwest Washington, um, and I'm humbled. And the candidates are saying it might be Thursday before we know who really officially won this race. Back to you. Yeah, because those ballots in Washington only had to be postmarked by today. Take a while to count them. Thank you, Pat Doris, live for us in Vancouver. Oregonians, no matter where you live, you will have the same representative in Congress next year. Suzanne Bonamici, Greg Walden, Earl Blumenauer, Peter DeFazio, and Kurt Schrader have all won re-election. Let's take a look at some more results from Washington now. In the only statewide election, incumbent Democratic Senator Maria Cantwell easily wins re-election. Washington also had some statewide ballot measures. For First up, a carbon emissions fee. Voters rejected that one. And a grocery tax ban passes in Washington, unlike the one in Oregon, which did fail, as we mentioned. Voters approved new restrictions on guns there. This is a big one. The minimum age to buy a semi-automatic rifle will now be raised to 21. And voters passed new law enforcement training rules requiring more training on violence, de-escalation, and mental health. So it's a historic night in Portland City Council. Joanne Hardesty will be the first black woman to serve as a city commissioner in Portland. She won in a landslide. And for the first time ever, women on the council outnumber men. KGW's Mike Banner has been at the Hardesty Victory Party, the celebration there in Southeast Portland all night. Mike, what is the latest from there? Oh, what a night here in Southeast Portland. Damn, we had a front row seat to history. For the first time ever, a black woman elected to Portland's city council. This was a party in every sense of the word, complete with tunes from the great Norman Sylvester. In fact, take a look at some video from uh, earlier. The winner tonight, Joanne Hardesty, dancing with her supporters not long after the Oregonian called this race. Hardesty defeats Loretta Smith, and she'll take over Dan Saltzman's seat on city council come January 2nd. Hardesty says she's not surprised she won. She says she and her team worked extremely hard, and when you work hard, you get results. The Baltimore, Maryland native is eager to get to work. She plans to tackle housing and police reform right out of the gate. As far as the historical part of this race, it's not lost on Hardesty that she becomes the first African-American woman on city council. Take a listen. Kind of sad in 2018 that we still have first that we have to achieve, right? Um, but I'm very thrilled to say that 
I don't believe the voters voted for me because they were looking for an African-American representative. I believe the voters voted for me because I spoke to their lived experience, right? Now, Hardesty says that she plans to bring City Hall to the people so they have a voice in democracy. Now, check this out. With the Hardesty win, for the first time ever, there are more women on the City Council than men. How about that? Back to you. And Joanne Hardesty has the only party still going on. And love Norman Sylvester, too. Thank you, Mike Benner. I'm joined now by political analyst Len Bergstein. Let's talk about Joanne Hardesty's big win. It was pretty lopsided. What does her win mean for the city council? Well, she's already made history, uh, as we've talked about just a moment ago, but now she has a chance to be a, a historic figure in terms of the central role she plays in the future of the city. She can either decide to be a kind of an outsider on the council and be an anti-establishment force, like she said on some of the issues she campaigned on, or she can kind of work to meld the council into a smooth running machine. I mean, the people, I think, want they want someone who is an outsider and a change agent, but they also want their city council to work. So she's got some real challenges. It's not all on her shoulders. The other council people have got to make her be an effective part of the five person team. But really, as the newest member uh, and in the way she won, uh, she's got a large responsibility in shaping the way the council operates on some very critical issues. All right, Governor Brown's big win over Newt Bueller. Yeah. Put this in perspective. What does this mean for the future of the state? Well, again, this is a chance for a, a governor to have legacy. Last term, uh, things change for you. You kind of look at the, your own role and the role, your role in history. Uh, you know, I think Newt, Newt Bueller was smart in saying that this is all about uh, the future, that uh, the, we can't afford to kind of have business as usual. And I don't think Kate Brown is a business as usual kind of person. So she's got a chance to put all of the policy credentials that she's got to work with a supermajority in the House and Senate and a, a kind of an army of people outside who want to help her do stuff. And she can pick and choose a couple of things that will really make a very strong progressive agenda for uh, Oregon. Not a lot of time left, but sure. the Democrats took majority control in the House. What does that mean for our congressional delegation? Four people got a promotion. Uh, four of the Democrats, one person got a demotion, Greg Walden. Uh, it means a couple of things. They will have the gavels. They will be in charge of, of policy issues. All of them are policy people. And the real challenge for them is to make sure that they put a break on Trump without being a foil to Trump. So they, because he loves playing off against people. So what's got to happen is our Democrats in our delegation have got to try and move an agenda forward without becoming kind of fodder for the Trump game. Len, thank you. you we'll bet. see you again later on.